Yeah, let's switch gears um, again into our sermon series um, called Unknown. Um, we were looking at starting this series regardless of all this, um, you know, COVID-19 stuff. We were, we were going to tackle the issue of, man, what, what do we do when we don't know what to do? Like, what, what can I do? There's moments where I don't know what to do, but what can I do um, in order to, to see it through? I know that's a lot of throughs and a lot of that, that kind of got maybe a little cluttered up, but it's just those moments where you're in life, you're just like, man, I don't know like what is going to happen next. Um, I can prepare, I can do my best. I can, um, I don't know. I can, I can like, if it like I can study as much as I can going into the test, but come test time or again, whatever context, uh, you want to put it in that fits you, but man, I don't, I don't know what the end result is going to be. And so it's kind of like that waiting period, which is, which is what we're in right now. We're in a waiting period. Um, we're again, two and a half, three weeks We're we're in quarantine and we're just trying to see this thing through. I feel like every other day things are, are being changed. Um, legislation's being passed to, you know, uh, help really just tackle this, this pandemic that we're going through. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know and encourage you like this time shouldn't be wasted. Um, and it's easy to do that. Like it's so easy to just uh, lie around the couch for, for some of us, for, for, for others, it, it's very hard. Like some of you are extroverts and you love being outside and you love just being with people and love doing stuff. Um, and on the other hand, some of you are homebodies. And so, and forever who, for anyone who's in between, uh, it could be very easy to to waste time and and to not really utilize it. Um, and I know we're limited by where we can go and what we can do, uh, but that's where you know the Word of God, the Bible, um, re reading His Word, reading the Scriptures, um, taking that in each and every day, uh, keeping our mind and our hearts just full of what, what what God is communicating, has been communicating, is going to continue to communicate to us. Um, filling our again filling our thoughts and our hearts with that and I know our daily verse uh, up until this point our daily verses have been um, just a testimony to that just encouraging words um, each and every day and it's that simple um, to hop on again you version and just read the scripture um, one scripture a day or for some of you with the soap uh, reading plan that is church-wide or, or whatever bible reading plan you're doing but it's it's very easy to, to waste this time and to not really utilize it to the best of, of our ability, to, to your ability. And, and I want to talk about that a little bit uh, tonight in, I don't know, sermon, talk, discussion. I, I know it's pretty much one way. Again, I know you guys can comment and, and, and do emojis and like and wave and all that stuff. But um, until these Zoom chats... Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, read through this uh, this passage of, of Scripture. It's in Joshua chapter 6. So um, if you have your Bibles with you, um, if some of you are using your phones uh, to stream right now, uh, go run and get your Bible uh, quick. Um, for some of you that aren't using your phone, you use version. I don't know, download version right now if you don't even have it. Um, it's free. It's that easy. And so uh, Joshua chapter 6, and we're going to start right at the beginning um it's titled the fall of jericho and we and we know this story um, i'm gonna read it i'm gonna try my best to read through it and not fumble over my words and all that but uh um as we read the story i want you to just listen or read for yourself um you can mute me if that's an option and just read it yourself <laughs> i don't i don't know but i'm gonna i'm gonna read along i'm reading out of the esv and so we're gonna read this passage of scripture um, and then we're going to circle back. I'm just going to break it down. And again, how how can this, like the living word of God, how can it apply to our lives right now in our context? So here we go. Uh, Joshua chapter 6, starting at verse 1. It says, Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. Wouldn't you know? No one could leave. Kind of like, you know, Kind of like us in our situation right now. Um, no one could go and, and no one could leave. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand. 
with its king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. Thus shall you do this for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow their trumpets. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with great or shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up everyone straight before him. So Joshua, son of Nun, called to the priest and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Go forward, march around the city, and let the armed men pass on before the Ark of the Lord. And just as Joshua commanded the, uh, the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horn uh, before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpets with the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord following them. The armed men were walking before the priests who were blowing the trumpets, and the rear guard was walking after the Ark, while the trumpets blew continually. But Joshua commanded the people, You shall not shout or make your voice heard, neither shall any word go out of your mouth. Until the day I tell you to shout, then you shall shout, so he caused the ark of the Lord to circle the city, going about it once. And they came into the camp and spent the night in the camp. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took the ark of the Lord. And the seven priests, bearing the seven trumpets of the ram's horns, before the ark of the Lord, walked on. And they blew the trumpets continually. And the armed men were walking before them, and the rear guard was walking after uh, the ark of the Lord. While the trumpets blew continually and the second day they marched around the city once and returned into the camp so they did for six days on the seventh day they rose early uh, at the dawn of the day and marched around the city in the same manner seven times it was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times and at the seventh time when the priests had blown the trumpets joshua said to his people shout for the lord has given you the city and the city and all that was within it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Okay, so we'll stop right there. And so pretty much we get the gist of it. Um, Joshua, even leading up to that, meets with the commander of the Lord's army. He kind of tells him the game plan, um, what's about to happen. And uh, now Jericho, yeah, so now they're at Jericho. Uh, and we know about the wall of Jericho and how they have to walk around it once a day for six days but on the seventh day then it's seven times and after that ah shout blowing of the horns the walls fall down and so a lot of the messages um in these past weeks leading up to tonight have been pretty much stories number one around jesus right number two have been stories that we kind of read about and we we already know maybe from sunday school or we've heard these stories multiple times and so um, I, I want to stick to that type of theme to where this is a story that we all know, but I just wanted to slow down and 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 really pick it apart and really just uh, talk about it uh, just for a second. I, and again, I don't want to keep you guys too long. Um, I don't want to bore you and force you to, to tune out, but uh, I just wanted to highlight first and foremost the promise, which is in verse 2, right? Right away, uh, the Lord says, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. That's a promise. Like when the Lord speaks and says that, like he's going to deliver. And so there's a lot of promises throughout this scripture that we can hold on to. I wrote a couple down in Isaiah 54, uh, 17. I, I, we all know this one, right? No weapon forged against you uh, will prevail. Other translations shall prosper, right? No, no weapon against you will prevail or shall prosper and so there's that promise there's the promise in romans 828 again another scripture that we that we know very well i'll read it right now and we know that in all things god works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose and so uh these are promises that that god has spoken in in this text um to these people to the prophet isaiah to Paul, uh, the apostle, 
uh, but there's still promises that we can hold on to as Christ followers. And so I want you to know that, um, that in this time of just uh, the unknown, like I don't, like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, I don't know what's going to happen with my schooling. I don't know what's going to happen with sports. I don't know what's going to happen with music, with, with band, with, with whatever. Like, I don't know the outcome. Um, but know this, uh, even through this story that God uh, already gave him the victory, already gave him a promise, and he saw it through. He was with them the whole time. And and I hope most, of, like all of you, believe that our God is a good God and he's never going to leave us or forsake us. And so um, those are the two promises that I wanted to highlight. I even wanted to highlight um, in Esther. It's funny, uh, Brit, uh, my wife Brittany was, was reading in Esther uh, yesterday. And so this, this verse stuck out to me in chapter 4, Esther chapter 4, verse 14. It says, who knows if perhaps you were made queen for such a time as this. And so queen being a position, right? And so if you were to take that out and insert whatever, um, it would say something like, who knows if perhaps you were made for such a time as this, for um, like your generation, Gen, let's just do that, Gen Z. Um, you were made, uh, Gen Z, you were made for such a time as this. Does that make sense? Because listen, like me, I'm, I'm a millennial, right? I don't know where I'm at on the millennial gauge. I wanna say I'm, uh, maybe a younger to, to middle uh, millennial aged. Um, but I know like uh, boomers, uh, even older Gen Xers, um, even uh, busters, if, if, if they're still around, I don't, I don't know. But the generations before your generation is, is kind of struggling right now um, when it comes to uh, utilizing all these social media platforms, trying to stay connected when we're not able to physically meet face to face like it's tough it's hard and a lot of um uh, the people within these generations are are trying to work they're working overtime trying to um adapt and change and grow in these areas but for you guys like my goodness you you like you're growing up with this like you you know how to use smartphones you know how to use um the social media platforms. Some of you have even TikTok or, you know, I mean, Snapchat or other platforms that we're not really using right now in Gateway Youth, but you're, you're already on it. And, and so it's just crazy to me how, man, such a time as this, like our world, ha yes, has gone through other virus scares. Um, but now that this is a, you know, like a, a world pandemic, um, man, such a crazy time for your generation, Gen Z, to step up and to really make a difference and to own it and to be um, God's light, you know, Gen Z that are Christ followers. And so, uh, I just wanted to stick that out, but, uh, stick that out there, but to get back to the title of unknown. And I know, uh, some of you could be either in a place where you're just chilling. Like this is good. Like this is amazing. This is my dream. I'm living the dream right now. I get to be home. Like I might not have a ton of schoolwork, uh, or I, you might be on the opposite side of the spectrum and you do, but it's it's easier for some reason. I don't know. Some of you might be okay with this, right? You might be homebodies. You might be introverts. Um, but for some of you that aren't, um, man, it, there could be worry. There could be doubt. There could be, you know, fear. There could be stress. There could be anxiety. Um, and some of the questions that could be popping in your head is like, man, how long will this last? like how long again every every other day it seems like something is being prolonged and so one question is like man how long is this gonna last like i don't even know um even some of the adults here um that have tuned in like i don't i don't really know how long this is gonna last like in 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 this the text we just read uh here in in chapter six um they knew right like they were given a, a length of time they were they were given yeah six days and then on the seventh day so seven days, right? They, they're giving a, a time link, but us on their hand, like we we don't we don't have that. We don't have that luxury, if you will. And so, and so we're kind of in that question, in the thick of it. Like, man, like again, how long is this gonna last? Another question could even be like, well, like will this work? Like, is this gonna like is this gonna work? It are these like elongated periods of time? Are these again? pieces of legislation are these 
um, program. And I'm not trying to, uh, to create fear or anything. Um, I, I believe they actually will. And I, I believe that, um, you know, they're working hard on, uh, you know, the antivirus and stuff like that. And shout out to all anybody actually in the medical field, um, you know, front lines, even the people that are working right now at, you know, your Meyer, your Aldi. Um, but it's kind of crazy. That, that could be a question that sneaks in there, man, will this even work? And, and I got that question because I was just thinking like, man, uh, all the Israelites, you know, the, the people we just read about, you know, they weren't allowed to speak. Um, and it's really easy, um, to speak our minds, right? We live in a country where you, you're entitled to your opinion and you can just throw out whatever you want. You can comment, you can just, you can like, you can dislike what uh, you can speak your mind, right? We live, we have that amendment. Um, but here in the text, they were given strict, you know, orders to not speak, to not talk. And okay, so, okay, if you can't outlet that, right, then all of it is kind of like trapped in here in a sense. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, man, some of, some of these people, if not maybe half or majority, were probably thinking like, man, I got like, jo Joshua, we, like, we, we got to walk around the whole entire wall once every six days and then seven times on the seventh day. And then we're just going to blow the horns and, and then magically the walls are going to fall, fall down. Like there, there's been a history of God's people like forgetting and not remembering and, and, and being in that state of doubt and worry and fear. And, uh, is this really, again, is this going to work? And so, uh, so I wanted to pose that second question again, two questions. How long is this going to last? And, and will this even work? And, and I just wanted to, to bring it back to, to the second, um, to the second point. I, I truly believe it will because God, like God's in this, like he, he already like saw this coming. Like God, it's crazy to think that God is outside of time and he's in time. Like time has no, not really, ha it doesn't really have any meaning to him. And if you think about it, um, like he's in our tomorrow, he's in our next week, he's in our next month, our next year. Like he's in my year 40 right now. It's, it's just a weird thing to think about, but it's so true. And so God already knows the outcome. And so it, our mind shouldn't be like, man, like, will this work? Like, does my God have a good plan that's going to work? I, I think the, the question that we should be asking is like, like, or, or telling ourselves is, man, we have a good God. Not like, does he have a good plan? Like, that doesn't really, the question should be like, or what our thought process should be is, man, we have a good God. Our God loves us. He fights for us. He's with us. He's within us and he who is in me like who like is greater than he is in the world and so with, again with everything that's going on um with all these questions with all these things popping in and out of our minds um and again for these guys in the scripture i'm, I'm telling you like fatigue probably set in and i know we're only like what is it day three now or day two into this quarantine but like Fatigue's gonna set in. Think about it. these guys had to literally walk around this wall. I did some math. I don't know if it's right. I'm not good at math, so don't make fun of me. You know, be be easy, be gentle. Um, but uh, so I looked it up. Forty four hundred and thirty thousand square feet. Right. As you divide that by four, um, and then you divide that again by how many feet are in a mile. And so I had like 122 um, miles give or take, uh, walked within those six days. So 122, let's say plus miles walked within those six days. And then another 142 plus miles walked on that seventh day to a combined 264, you know, plus miles total. There's just a lot of miles, like a lot of like every day was just shy, I guess, of like a, like a marathon, you know what I mean? And they had to walk that each and every day. And so I'm sure fatigue set in. I'm sure, you know, along with uh, the, the the mental uh, doubts and, and fears, I, I'm sure the physical aspect set in as well. And so while we're not, you know, physically walking, we, we still got to walk this out. Maybe not physically, but, but spiritually, emotionally, mentally, 
we got to walk this thing out and see it through. And I don't want us to, you know, to stop on, you know, uh, like day two, day three or four. Like I want us to get to that day seven and to actually be able to, once we get to our day seven, to walk around seven times. And then by the end of it, we're just like, this is, God, you are good. Like you are good. You are amazing. Da, And, and just celebrate and just see the glory of God and how everything uh passed and like now we're out of what we were in and and God led us through it and yeah we were tired we were fatigued we were scared we were doubtful but but knowing that our God is good not that he has like a good plan but he he's a good God it's great God and so that's just a thought um that I had when it came to um again this unknown series uh, I don't want to, again, keep you guys on longer than I have to and, and force you to tune out or anything like that. But uh, those are just my thoughts. Um, I love you guys. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I, I just as a, you know, husband, a father, a youth pastor, um, just a person, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's tough. Um, like even, even, uh, you know, some of the parents that tuned in, like, man, it's tough right now. Um, you know, and I'm, and I'm not trying to close my eyes and, and pray it away and, 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 and be like, pray it away in the sense of like, it, it's not existent. Like it doesn't exist. Like this is, this is a real thing. Like what's going on is so real. Um, and, and it's in moments like these where, um, when we go through real moments, we find out how real our God is. Does that make sense? And so we're going through such a real thing right now. A real uh, unknown thing, a real, you know, scary thing. You know, we, we always fear the unknown. That's just the human uh, nature. Uh, that's humanity, right? Anything that's unknown, that's foreign, that's different, we're just, we kind of reject it and we're kind of intimidated and, and, and scared of it and we, and we push it away. And, uh, but I, I just want to encourage you that again, coming from, uh, from, from me, just be, again, being a person, a pastor, a father, a, a husband, um, a friend, hopefully, um, I'm a friend, um, to most of you guys that are tuning in right now. Um, that again, we're going through some real stuff, but we have a real God that can help us in this time. And I, I just hope we don't get distracted. I hope we don't get fatigued. I hope we don't let our mind go to places where it shouldn't, you know? I just, I'm praying that over you guys each and every day, seriously, not just my family and my relatives and the close ones, and, and but I'm praying that over you guys, over the leadership team, over the student leaders, um, I love you guys and uh, it's in those moments where it's like man I don't know what to do um, I but I know what I can do um, and I can I can hear from my father in heaven that that loves me so much and I can read his word and I can just be in his presence and I can listen to some worship music or I can I can just pray and talk with him have a conversation with him um, air some things out, get off much. I'm not bound like, like the, like the Israelites were right in, in the scripture where they couldn't really speak until the last day. Like I'm able to talk and communicate and pray with my God. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to, to end with that.